<sighs> Airplane's broken again. The manufacturer doesn't want to sell me parts. I guess I'll just burn the whole airplane down. Okay. There's an APU running in the background, so I'm sorry if you can hear that, but I'm going to try my best to edit the video and make it make sense. We are right now doing a little work on the P-35 Beechcraft Bonanza. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I've had a lot of new folks following me, and I just want to say hello. If you've been here since day one, you're a real one. If you've been here since day, let's say, 15, cool. Love you too. All right, let's move on. Airplane sitting behind me. Cowling's open. We have just installed a plane power alternator um, in the tunnel of the airplane, which is right here uh, under my hand. And the next thing I need to do is install a regulator because the old generator doesn't have the same setup as uh, this alternator. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. What today's project is all about is finding clever ways to keep these airplanes flying. And by clever ways, I mean using modern tools to keep these things in top condition. Now, at a certain point, someone's going to hop into the comments and they're gonna go, ah, you can't talk about parts and making parts and doing all this stuff on your, on your own. Well, let me tell you, there are regulations that guide us and I'm actually surprisingly good at reading and following regulations. Part of my day job, you might not know that, but again, welcome to the channel. Um, what we're going to do is hop onto my computer and I'm going to show you a few examples of using modern tools to solve some of the existing problems we have in general aviation. That's parts availability, um, dimensioning things, you know, making sure that things fit the first time, uh, reducing waste, and just using the best tools for the job. That doesn't have to be nuts, bolts, wrenches. It could involve other things. And you know, the other things will fill the gap. So let's hop to the computer. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the process in which I use to make sure things will fit and to make sure I have a catalog of parts to keep this thing flying. Because it's an old airplane. It was born in 1963, um, designed way before that. As a matter of fact, the Beechcraft Bonanza has been around for much longer than that. And a lot of the parts are pretty common. Let's use this one, for example. I call this the gill panel. It actually goes right there and improves cooling in this area because of the fins. The older uh, Bonanzas, uh, E-series Bonanzas, don't have those fins, but it also improves access. The cowling of this airplane does not come off, so having a panel like this that you can remove is very helpful. But what happens if that panel breaks? What happens if I can't find a replacement? What happens if everyone else has already taken up all the replacements? Um, what happens if the manufacturer of that part goes out of business? Am I just gonna scrap the entire airplane or put speed tape over that area? While that might work in an apocalyptic situation, that's not what we're talking about today. So let's hop to the computer and I'm gonna show you a really cool tool to do really cool things in the modern era that I think is going to help to keep these airplanes flying and keep you interested in eventually buying an airplane. Again, that's my whole thing. Welcome to the channel. Okay, well, history is important, so let's have a brief recap. I bought this airplane a few years ago. It was parked outside, and I decided to give it a full refurb before taking it flying for the first time in six or seven years. This represents the type of opportunities that I've been talking about on the channel, accepting no excuses for getting these airplanes flying or doing a great job even if the airplane is parked outside. You'll even notice that I'm using battery powered tools to just help me out. Anyways, it's hot out here so we want to do most of our work where it's cool and it's cool in my house so I use the tool to get a scan to bring this thing home to get dimensions so the next time I come out to the airport I could be really successful. How's that for a recap? Did I miss anything? Well of course I did. One of the things that you're going to realize about this channel is I highlight my maintenance professional and I've collected a gaggle of them over the past few years. Never do anything without consulting your favorite maintenance professional. All right, to the computer. Here's example number one that a lot of you can relate to. This is the left side panel or the left wall of the Piper Arrow from the instrument panel all the way back to the baggage area. 
And what we were able to do was take this scan, use a program to make a map, and then use a printing service to make templates for insulation. The insulation was going to add noise deadening and was also going to reduce temperatures on the outside because I live in Savannah, remember that. But I was able to do all of that work without having to be at the airplane in the sun without shade, measuring cardboard panels, transferring it over to the insulation and sticking it in. I just simply went in, stuck it in the first time. That was time and money being saved. So as you can see, the template worked out pretty well. Um, I'll have some cleaning up to do and reattaching some hoses, but worked out fairly well. That's the first panel right there. Massive shout out to me for having the forethought to record that video almost a year before I started this channel, but success. We did it. We saved a lot of time and time is money. We were accurate. We also wasted very little of the material that we already had. Okay, let's look at another example that's a little bit more up to date, as in I just did this maybe three days ago. I'm not even sure why it's relevant to show you walking up to the van, but this is the Creality Raptor. It's an off-the-shelf 3D scanner that you can buy for under $2,000. And it's even better than the Einscan H that I was using in the previous Arrow example. The kind of time that this thing saves me and energy, like the example that you saw before, is unbelievable. Well, I almost forgot to record what I was doing. I've got to become a lot better at that since I've got a YouTube channel. Anyways, here's a generator. Here's an alternator. You might be asking what's the difference between the two. And for what we're doing today, that difference is inconsequential. We're just scanning each one of them using a 3D scanner, this 3D scanner, to get some geometry. We're trying to get some CAD data. We're trying to get an idea of sizing not because i'm doing anything special but just so that i have this information to pass on to someone else in the future so we're going to replace this generator on my bonanza with this plane power alternator and while it was out of the airplane i figured i'd 3d scan it that way we have the information we have the data and when i install this one i'll be able to scan it on the airplane as well and uh see how it looks or see how it fits so we can compare it to other installations. Now all these dots that you see all around here are little reflective dots for the 3D scanner. It picks up an image of each one of these dots and they're randomized, they're placed in random places. And based on that picture of the dots, it knows where it's at in 3D space. It knows that this grouping of dots here is always in this spot and this grouping of dots here are always in this spot. I even 3D printed some little dot holders that I can position wherever I want for flexibility. And so now we're going to turn the 3D scanner on, scan this assembly, merge it in the computer. We'll flip it upside down, scan the bottom, merge the two uh, halves. And then I'll have a CAD model, essentially a high fidelity model of both this alternator and this generator. Again, what we do with it, no one knows but we've got to find clever ways to keep the fleet going. And these are some of the tools that we're going to use. Here's another example. A friend of mine handed me a vent that had been cracked from his Mooney, and I was able to 3D scan it and turn it into a CAD model that could later be 3D printed and installed on the same airplane. These are vents that you probably couldn't find in good shape anymore because the airplane's been out of production for so many years. Another example here, I really want to do an interior refresh on my Bonanza, and so I took some time, took the seat out, 3D scanned it so I can get some measurements of the seat, try to figure out how much material I needed. Now, could I pay someone to do this exact same job? Yeah, probably. And honestly, I might just do that because I've got so much going on, but I have the data. I have the information. I could do something with it later on. It's never instant gratification with airplanes. We only save our memories and our information now to make informed decisions in the future. That is the important part. These things are gonna be around for another 50 years. So let's keep them in as good a shape as we can and mark the times that we had a moment to get good measurements or get good data. Okay, then now what? You've got all this data, you've got all this information. 
you've got to turn it into something useful or send it over to someone who can turn it into something useful and then get the part made. There are many online services, I'm going to try to put a couple in the description, uh, that can make you parts um, and you'll be involved in the manufacturing of said parts on your airplane. So the regulations are important. Understand the regulations and an understanding of the regs and working with a maintenance professional like an AMP or an IA who understands the regulations is going to make your life a lot easier. Now with that said, I don't expect you to take away from this video how to put all this stuff together. You can do two things. You can find someone out in the community who can do this kind of stuff and help you put the package together or you can encourage your daughter to go to school to become an aerospace engineer like me and she will eventually be able to make all the parts that you could ever want for your own airplane. Plant that seed now, watch it grow. That's what this thing is all about. Now, I know it's a lot to take in. It's technology that's not very uh, popular in the aerospace or the avi general aviation space, but aerospace manufacturers have been using 3D scanning and CAD and CNC machining for a very, very long time. Oh, that reminds me. This video had to come full circle somehow, so here's the final example. From that scanned data that I took, I was able to make the bench cover that covers the flap control mechanism for the Piper Arrow. Here I am cutting it out on a really affordable CNC router in enough accuracy that it just slapped right into the airplane. And the best part of it was my mom was in the area when this happened and she helped me put it back together and we signed the bottom of this, uh, this bench. So it, it really was an experience to remember, and now we have a part that will be in this airplane for a very, very long time to come. I hope you've gotten something useful out of this little chat. Drop a comment down below if you want to know more about something specifically. We can have a talk about it in the comments, or I can make another video. I've got lots more of these little nuggets to come, including some flying when the airplane finally gets its propeller back. Be good to yourself. Again, say hello to your neighbor. Thank a truck driver today. <laughs> Commerce can't happen. Your meds don't get delivered. Your fancy t-shirts don't come in the mail if a truck driver doesn't wake up and have a safe day. Thank them for doing what they're doing because they are the people that keep the economy ticking. And we'll see you next time. Read the regulations.